Hello. If you're looking for deep truth and authenticity in a world that feels more and more artificial every day, you come to the right place. If you're in need of a breath of fresh air, welcome. I'm Reagan. I'm Bianca. And this is a Breath of Fresh Air podcast. Woo! <laughs> so excited. Yeah, we're, we're all like pumped up today. You never know what you're going to get with us. Like, <laughs> either going to be like riled up, like raw, raw, raw energy or like Zen, you know, guided meditation on the way in or <laughs> it could be anything. <laughs> yeah, most of the time we don't even know. We just show up and it comes through. 100%. What kept coming up for me recently is something that Reagan said in, I think, the last podcast episode, and it was just the phrase, let it be new, and I just, we're starting there and see where it takes us. Yes, and I'm so grateful you you brought that in because it's so relevant to what I'm going through, you know, right now, and I'm sure what, you know, what we're all going through of this uncharted territory it is new you know and letting it be new and letting yourself be reborn is um so beautiful it reminds me of like beginner's mind kind of just going Mm -hmm. into things without having all these like programs or preconceptions about it from the past yeah i think i think for me it was coming through in this way of like you know, it's really easy to feel like I'm in control if I feel like I know what to expect, like in a good way or a bad way. So it's like, oh, I can keep, you know, trying to figure this thing out or I can just let it be new. And maybe it's something that I've never experienced at all. Or if I come with this energy, you know, let's see what happens. I love that. I love that. Yeah, that's, I feel like that is very wise to to be in these times i love to hear more too about like what you why why that was coming up for you yeah i'm definitely a person who and i don't know if this is all people but i'm definitely a person who i would say i'm I'm intuitive but sometimes my mind gets a hold of the intuition and and changes it into something else so it's like the feeling could be like real you know and we've talked about this before with feelings like oh, I'm feeling kind of off or like something. But then my mind convinces itself that it knows exactly what's off or exactly this, this, and this. And sometimes it's just making up a story based off like past trauma or past beliefs or core beliefs or insecurities. And and then it's like conflating intuition, which is a calm, sometimes just this inner knowing is how I experience it to this like, you know, oh, this, and then, and it turns into like scheming almost and like trying to create a strategy around unknowable factors. And so, you know, I caught my mind doing that. And then I thought back the words that came in my head were what you said in the last, oh, here goes the, you said it sounded like elephant stampeding last time. I can't really hear it much this time. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, <laughs> let it be new. I guess it was different today, even though it's the same anyway. (laughs) uh, Yeah, it was like my mind was doing that. And then the phrase that just came in my head is what you said, like during the podcast episode, which is let it be new. And I was like, and I just kind of repeated it like a mantra. And I felt like very free in that moment. Like, huh. Wow. I feel like everything you just said is so profound. I mean, you just put words into something I feel like I've been going through as well. And I have not known how to say it of just like, yeah, let it be new. Like there's, I feel the same way. Like when, when, you know, cut some kind of resistance or something comes up and there is that kind of knee jerk reaction to try to scheme, you know, try to do something, try to find some like magic potion or some escape or like some alluding to it, like some way to evade it. And, I, I see myself doing that as well. And it, and it just kind of makes me tired at this point. It's like, why, what am I doing? Like, why, what is all this? Like, it's just kind of, I feel like some of it more drama to the ego, not that there's anything wrong with whatever, you know, you need to do to perhaps like regulate yourself. But um, yeah, it's really interesting. I, I kind of push myself to, to just like be, to just be in it and stop trying to run from it and, and let it be new, let it be felt, let it be like, revealed I guess yeah I think it it really has gotten to a point where 
there's almost no way to keep your sanity and other than to just have that level of acceptance that like a lot of things that we're experiencing and this is like true on so many levels but i mean even just as a collective as a whole like a lot of things we're experiencing we never experienced before so if we try to make it into something we understand we'll just be missing it because our we'll either be too narrow or like too zoomed in or just not present enough to really be with the experience um and i think that's what i feel called to the most right now is like maybe i don't know you know maybe i don't have a good grasp on things and and maybe that's okay and how freaking courageous is that truly you know because i i really i i'm just always amazed at how like in sync we are with some of these things but i feel the same way you know there's so many things on this awakening journey that you know I, in the past i thought i knew and it's like it's guided me to where i am now but the more i feel like i keep going the more it's be, it's like it's just beyond what i know it's so beyond what i know and i think to have the humility to open to be open to that and allow that that's really where like magic is but it's scary yeah it, it's really it is really scary because it's like you know our mind is primed for like trying to calculate and and make plans for survival and so when it doesn't even have any part of the equation <laughs> like you know you, you don't even know if you're adding or subtracting or are supposed to be using the quadratic formula right now it's just like you know Who's, who's the X factor? What is the fact? Like, there's no way. It's just, there's not, it's so unknown. And it, in a weird way, it makes me think about this um, kind of like thought someone shared. I can't remember if I read it or heard it, but that like, you know that you're really basically operating from a place of love when you give it without any expectation. Like, you're not like, I am giving this so that anything, not even necessarily like that it be mirrored back to you. Just like, you know, I'm giving this. That's, I don't need anything. Like, it's just, it is what it is. And I feel like in a way that's kind of like acceptance. Like, I don't need to know all the factors in order to have peace. You know, I can just let it be. And if it's, and I just do feel there's a lot of newness. And I think that's why the phrase, let it be new is coming through. But sometimes, you know, just like, I don't need it to be anything. It just, just let it be. And I do feel like in this time, it's a lot of, you know, unknowns that can be exciting too. I don't think it's like a, I don't feel a bad energy around it or something, but it still can be scary. Yeah, it's, well, it's like liberation, you know, to, to me, that's how I'm feeling it is. It's like liberating yourself from all of these boxes and things in the past that we were just in and we didn't even know it we couldn't even see it and then it's like you know you start to see it and you kind of come out of these boxes and it really is so liberating to like have that what you're describing is like letting go of all these attachments you know what i mean and it's like those attachments really do weigh weigh us down so much and i know for myself like yeah it's so liberating and i love it but i know i've for being honest, sometimes it is so hard to to let go of some of these old programs, but it's it's so worth it to just keep moving forward with that kind of, I think, courage and focus. Yeah, and I think it's it's definitely like a, a process, um, like a you know a practice, like most things, and like that's okay too. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think it's it's pretty natural that we crave certainty, so like there's gonna be those feelings coming up and, but I do think it's like the more that we can operate from that space, the better it is for us. And I do like the, the, you know, that you said it's liberation. Cause it's like, huh. <laughs> like, you know, when you need things to be a certain way or turn out a certain way, it's like you are tied to that outcome for a sense of like safety. And that can almost become like a prison yeah, very much so. It is, you know, it is. And, and we don't, sometimes we don't kind of realize it until it's like so, um, <clears throat> it feels so suffocating that it's like, oh my gosh, I have to let go. But I think if you, you know, approach it with 
you know, what you're describing and just letting it be new. It doesn't have to be so um, hard, you know, it's just kind of allowing, it's really because, you know, it's reminding me of the truth, which is that our liberation is always now. It's always here now within us in every moment. And what's crazy is I think as we keep practicing that, um, you know, you just, there'd be times in your life where you find your ego or whatnot clinging to something again, you know, and it's almost like, at least for me, it's like, it's almost like I black out or something, you know, it's like all of a sudden like this like ego attachment, um, whatever it is, maybe it's like an attachment to an outcome or a desire or whatever, some kind of like, I, I feel like even subtle, like subtle coping mechanism. So, you know, when that happens, it's such a great opportunity to, to see it and then come back to the now. Yeah. Liberation is now. I feel like that's a book title. <laughs> <laughs> what when when can we expect that <laughs> to hit the shelves? Because it seems like, you know, that's 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 like a loaded statement. It's it's so simple, but it's so much to that because you know, it's, just, it's something we've talked about, I know, but just that, that feel, there's always that feeling that something's going to happen and that it's not available to us now. Like there's something that we have to do or wait for or plan for. And it's like being like, no, it's right now. It's almost scary to have that much autonomy over our experience. It is. It is. I, I don't know why this is making me think of it, but I just recently watched the matrix again you ever watched that yeah and i don't know why it's just hitting different it's just because it really feels like that it's like none of the i don't know like if this is like i feel like this is relevant but it's just like it feels like nothing is real but it's like what we're making real and so like the power of our mind and thoughts it, it really i don't know i feel like it, it really is so true like just to see how how, how that affects our reality so much. And then I feel like what we're doing here in a way is like coming into the heart and not being so controlled by the mind, which is like so deeply um, archaically wired for like all of these sort of impulses, you know? And it's like, we're kind of just having to navigate like seeing that and like honoring that and having compassion for that, but also like coming back into what actually is real and that's like so it's so intense <laughs> but it's beautiful <laughs> yeah I, I I mean it just never gets old that huh like we are really like energy generators facilitating certain experiences and like realities and I think that is a huge aspect to the let it be new thing it's like you can keep feeding that story. You can keep feeding that experience or, you know, and I think sometimes we don't even make it to the or. <laughs> it's just like, this is like this and this and this. And it's like, it can be. And, and, and it's not wrong to say that it has been if that's what has been, but, or to let it be new. And yeah, it, it, I haven't seen The Matrix, like, in a few years, but, you know, you just can't. You could never, like, watch it too many times, I feel like. Maybe if you watch it every day, it would get a bit much. But, like, I feel like it's good to periodically, like, <laughs> watch the movie that, like, blew the top off of a lot of people's, like, like they had, like, limited them, a bit limited or limited themselves. And I was like, wait, <laughs> wait, what? Yeah, it really is a documentary in so many ways. Um, yeah, because the, the moment, the now moment is always new. And that's the paradox, I guess, is it's eternal, but it's always new. So it's like, there's so much like strength and wisdom and, 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 you know, knowing that and carrying that with you is knowing that in every moment, you can be new, you can be reborn, you don't have to identify with like all these stories or all of these things in your past, you know, that tend to like, suffocate us, you know, it's crazy. But then I think, the the intense part is letting go of those attachments being so untethered in a way and I think that's also you know it just takes courage to do that because um you know as though even though many people have done that many times I think in a way we're kind of pioneers in that sense you know for for mo for many for many people many people because 
it's a, it just even if it's uncomfortable and excruciating it still feels a lot more like safe in a way a lot of times to cling to those ego things because it you feel like it defines you so when you start to come out and and say you know even just with that level, that spirit of kind of curiosity is like what happens if i just let it be new you know and you have to really actually do that for yourself to know yeah and i i was what you were saying made me think about how a lot of times people are primed to think, well, how bad can it get? How much worse could it get? But I think it's important to say, well, how good could it get? How good could it get? And then just like, see what happens. And it's interesting too, that, you know, there's this idea of jinxing, like, oh, don't say like a good thing or don't focus on a good thing because you'll jinx it. (laughs) I don't know if you ever heard that, but there's like a lot of times people will be afraid to admit what they want or fixate on it or think about it. And it's like this really interesting way that somehow a lot of people have gotten this idea in their head that if you say today's a good day, that you're jinxing it or like, oh, no, now it's going to be a bad day. So don't say it's going to be a good day. Say it's going to be a terrible day. Focus on all the things that could go wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that a lot. I feel like that's kind of like a testament to like just the levels of kind of like you know, whatever you want to call it, but I would call it like self-sabotage, you know, in the mind for so many people, really for everyone, you know, if like, I can't say that because then, you know, you know, and again, that's just like these mind games. And I feel like for me, it's like trying to come on this like path, you know, again, like the middle path, this balanced path of like not being a slave to the mind, but also living in a reality where like you still – I think have to use your mind, you know, unless you're really going to just be like a monk and meditate in the cave all the time. But it's like when we're navigating this reality, you know, you do have to use your mind, but I think that's what makes it kind of so um, sometimes intense because you're, you're, you're learning how to use your mind, not be used by your mind. <laughs> like yeah <laughs> what a bummer no i'm just kidding <laughs> no did you, did you have more on that because that was you're on a roll <laughs> i don't know i just want to i just i just want to i guess be authentic with how how hard that is you know and just be humble with that you know if you're if we're being honest with ourselves um i think the more you practice it the better you get at it but i'm still just amazed with I'm just amazed with like the way my mind can take me on like these trips. Yeah, I just want to be authentic about how how hard it is sometimes to um, to observe your mind and and use it without getting like pulled into its strong kind of uh, momentum that it has, you know, of of the programs, you know, these things that might not even like have anything to do with you personally but it's just like your the realm of the mind is really that intense that it tries to like pull you in really in any way that it can <laughs> yeah it is wild it it makes me think a lot about um i don't know if you've ever seen like venom or you know like spider-man and the venom thing and it's like at first it it's basically like an alien and it like attaches to spider-man suit or whatever and at first it's like i'm helping you i'm learning you and then it's like okay now i'm gonna think for you and it kind of like turns you know into like this thing that when it gets full reign basically like just wrecks havoc both on spider-man peter parker because like he'll be sleeping and the suit is just moving around and doing all this stuff it's very much kind of like representative of unconsciousness but yeah, it, it's like, I'm helping you. I'm your friend. Like, you know, this is, this is good. No, you, you would like this. <laughs> it's like the mind, you know, the mind can be like that, like, no, 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 this is good. And so that's, you know, the power of like observing and awareness of like what your mind is doing. Like, it's like, no, we're not going to do that. Like, that's not what we're doing today. Put the cake down. Like, no, <laughs> you know, or like put the phone down. Like, don't send that text, you know, like maybe don't keep scrolling, you know what I mean? Or whatever it is. I mean, it is really hard because the mind, it can feel, you know, like in a world that we're, 
we're almost encouraged to be very driven by our ego. It can feel like the one thing that's in your corner, you know, if you're, especially when you're operating from this, not trying to let things be new because you want to feel certain. So it's like, no, no, like, yeah, maybe that is true. Maybe, maybe they are talking about me behind my back. Yeah. Like, Hmm, I wonder what they're saying. I bet they're saying this and I bet they're saying, you know what I'm saying? And so it's like, no, no, like, we're not going to do that. Let it be new. You know, maybe, maybe they did do that, but maybe they didn't. You have no idea. You have no way of knowing that. So maybe instead of walking into a situation feeling like, oh, I know exactly what happened and I'm going to come in with this energy. What if I just observe myself like you? I love what you said, observing yourself, observing the other person through and then like letting God's eyes be the thing, seeing it and allowing miracles to happen. And I think I just been thinking about that so much ever since you said it. I'm I'm grateful for your reminder because I feel like even though I said it, I like forget it. So I need to hear it again, especially when we're talking because we're just like, you know, it seems like feel like we're really kind of like channeling this higher energy. It, it really is a, a whole new way of being, I would say, is like walking through life like that. And even, you know, even if you're dealing with people or they are saying things about you, it's like, there's like a certain level where it's like none of this is even real because it's like their ego is talking about my ego. It's like, what does that have to do with me? You know, I don't know. That's how I kind of see it sometimes. But like, I, and it's weird because I see it that way. But then, you know, I still have my ego that's still like hurt by this kind of stuff. So I feel like it's just like continuing to, you know, just live through these experiences and keep like having that focus and firmness of pulling that awareness back in and be like, listen, you know, maybe I need to love something in myself or, you know, that's usually if we're, if I, if it's like hurtful or triggering, but um, not making it just not, it's just like really just kind of like withdrawing from, I think all of this drama, like just so much drama that we're so programmed, like to just be in at all levels, like inside and out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's that, the drama. And then it's funny because like, you know, I've told myself before, like, I'm not, I'm not dramatic. I don't like drama. And then I've like looked back at some of the mental dramas that I've gotten all the way pulled into. I'm like, maybe I do like drama. <laughs> maybe some part of me actually really does like drama. And I think that's kind of for me, that's a sign. Like when I immediately jump to like, no, never <laughs> to something, it's kind of like maybe I should investigate that a little bit more because the more I'm trying to convince myself not to look at something, it's like maybe there's something there inside of myself that I don't want to see or acknowledge because of the implications of that. But yeah, I 100% agree that like it just it just becomes this whole thing. And I think that's it's almost I think about what Eckhart Tolle said, that if you observe your mind and you make it a practice, eventually you'll just start laughing at some of this stuff. Like you'll be like, that's so like, you're ridiculous right now. And not in like a invalidating way of like, shut up. It's just like you observe it and you're like, you just kind of shake your head and then you can keep going on with your day. But if you, as soon as you kind of like aren't vigilant, I found like you just are in that drama and it's like, you know, and it's so interesting too, because, you know, when you start getting into that state of doing your best to observe your mind, you kind of see you kind of see it happen both within yourself and other people where like you watch something unfold that like, you're like, Oh, they just took that away. Like they took something from that, that I don't know what they took, but their response, like something just happened in their mind that they just, that was something that I can't even understand. Yeah. Yeah. You really, you really start to see it, you know, in, in others and in yourself. And I love that. I think that's so important to have that, humility because usually it, it a lot of times the ego is like no I don't do that and it was just funny when you're saying that because I was just thinking about like no I don't I don't do drama and then the ego's like lights camera action <laughs> let's go <laughs> like set the scene <laughs> the ego's like a theta <laughs> and theta like it's like he got the like hat and the mustache like for no reason like it's in the chair turning around like spinning and stuff and you're like I don't do drama <laughs> It's like, this is going to be our biggest production yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. The production of I Don't Like Drama starring Reagan King. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. The ego is wild. But I think it's, it's yeah, I love those moments when instead of I'm getting pulled in, I'm like, 
ha, huh, that was really ridiculous. <laughs> like, you know, the, when it can be like a lightness to it, I feel like that's when it's also a, a level of newness when it's like everything doesn't feel so serious all the time. Like, not that it's nihilistic or nothing matters, but it's like, huh, like a level of lightness, like everything doesn't have to be a big deal. Yeah, because that's how the soul feels, you know. I feel like the soul feels like that, whereas, like, the ego is very, like, it needs to be like this, it needs to be like that, why are you doing this? And, like, this the self-torture, too, you know, that is so also inundated in the mind. It's just, like, you know, I don't think, I think that's something, like, again, like, just, like, having compassion first for yourself and others. Probably the biggest skill that we need here and that, you know, I'm really grateful to be learning that. And, you know, I can see I've come a long way with that, but I'm still practicing just having that sort of soft more lighter response you know firstly to myself because that's also just going to mirror how you react to others as well of like if I do do something or something happens instead of like why are you doing that why are we doing that blah 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 why is it because that's an ego thing anyways it's like why am I my ego it's like actually just like the ego it's so cunning like that but um you know just having that love and that grace and like okay you know it's okay. It's okay. You know, it's okay. And and I feel like the more compassion we can truly have, you know, the more we, we tend to come just into a, a higher alignment anyways, with what whatever, whatever the issue is. Yeah. Letting it be new. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think, you know, for me, some of some of what's old is just like clinging. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, being head centered instead of heart centered and having to be right is a big thing that I, that I, I will say I used to get really caught up on like recovering. I don't know. Like I, I treat things like I would, I would typically treat things like a lawyer. Like I'm like trying to prove facts and gather evidence to like <laughs> prove my point. And like, it's not, it's like, even if you're good at that, you're still losing is what I found. Like you can compile all the evidence in the world that you're right. That person has it out for you that um, that'll never work, uh, whatever the case may be, but you still lost is what I found every time. And it was a trade-off I found that isn't worth it. Like sometimes I am wrong and I would rather be wrong, especially about some of the old stories that I told myself or our core beliefs that limited me. I, I actually want to be wrong about some of those things. And until I could let it be new, you know, then I was in that cycle of trying to be right about things that made me feel terrible <laughs> instead of leaving space for things that uplifted me to come in because I just needed to cling to what I felt I could control. Yeah, and that's the thing about, you know, trauma, it, and it's just, it's so strong in the mind where, like, the mind will want to keep repeating, even when it's, like, you're, like, basically kind of, like, victimizing yourself, it's, like, the mind gets kind of, can get kind of, like, addicted to that, you know, and so that's another reason to pull yourself out of the mind is, and why that's such a journey, you know, like, in the long run you know if you see just like all of the stuff that humanity has been through just in the past few decades let alone just in the past few years even but you know generations it's like it makes a lot of sense why there's all of these like old kind of like just like archaic neural pathways or whatever just thinking about these things and in perceiving the world in this way and so you know it's just kind of, you know, another testament to like the work that we're doing, why it is so much sometimes, why it feels that way is because it, it, we have to give ourselves credit because it's so grand what we're doing. It's like, you know, I know for me, it's like, I feel like I just overcame like all of these attachments I had and, you know, I'm so grateful. And then, you know, the next day it's like, there's a whole new set of them. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> I literally just like did this, but now it's something new, but, and I'm not complaining. It's just, um, you know, it's like, I just think that's just evolution itself, you know, and, and just again, like, just like kind of doing what you can to, I guess, enjoy that process and remember that you are always free. It's not, um, it's not that, you know, now I'm enslaved by these new things. It's just, I am free, but now it's like, I, I still have, you know, some kind of resistance that I'm having to kind of move through. 
I don't know what to respond to first. <laughs> Sometimes I just like to sit here when that happens. <laughs> but what you were saying about attachments, it made me think of like um, song lyrics that came to me one time and it was like all these invisible strings are pulling at me. And I feel like that's what living feels like so often, just like all these different things trying to like pull you. And it's just in a million different directions, if not more. But then also, I love that you brought in the aspect of like ancestral, even like ancestral trauma and, and what it means to let it be new on, in that way. Is, it makes it even more profound because it, it kind of contextualizes that, you know, for as long as we've really been, well, the recorded history that we mostly recorded history that we have <laughs> are, are what we can look back at right now. Um, you know, what we'll see consistently is suffering and survival and and people not really having the space to be expansive in the way that we have the opportunity to be. And sometimes it's easy to feel like it's um, a given that people would even be in a space of kind of having existential crises, but like, what is happening? What are we here for? This and, but I mean, there was a time when people were just hand to mouth to the point that it wasn't, and we could, we, there's probably aspects of that were, that were maybe a little bit better in the sense of people's perspective on life might've been more grounded because there wasn't as much um, distraction, I think in some ways, but then there was, I think on the side of like, when you're just surviving, you know, you're not really getting that space to you know, explore spirituality in the sense of like um, kind of philosophizing. People didn't necessarily have the space for that, which we could say this good. There's good and bad aspects to that on both sides. But I mean, the position we're in is just unique and it can feel like, of course, people would be trying to find some deeper purpose in life. But like there was a time when people w weren't thinking about that at all. Yeah, it is so unique, the times we find ourselves in. There's no denying that, especially with the way that I feel like the world used to be such a big place. And now with the internet, it's like everything is so very interconnected. And I think it's only getting more that way. And I, and I, and it's also really insane that you brought up the distractions, because that was something that kind of I was thinking about today as well, is just the amount of distractions um, it is like everything pulling you and it gets to be a lot, especially even for, at least for me, like being someone who is kind of like very kind of a mental person. It's like, I'm really grateful. Um, I think I did it for one week. I don't know if it's been almost two weeks already. I don't know, but I, I just took like a huge break from just going on social media at all because the amount of information and even philosophical stuff, like, it's just like, I felt like I, I was like just like my it's like when you eat too much and your stomach is just full it's like i can't take in any more information um and i don't know why i wanted to share that but i just think that's another thing to be aware of in this time it's like you you gotta have i think time to process all of this stuff and it's almost like in my opinion it's almost gluttonous if you're like keep eating all this information you know especially just like the the mind fuckery of like yeah, like TikTok or like these tiny short clips where they're always packing all this information, even if it is like educational or inspiring, it's still like, if you don't sit there to process it, I feel like it all just kind of like gets in like a backlog. So I don't know, I just want to add that to, to kind of what you're saying about, you know, the times we're in, I think that definitely, it's such a double edged sword, because you know, it can be inspiring and creative, but it can also be really, really distracting and ungrounding to um to you know what we're doing here yeah again just so many things that like that resonates really deeply for me and it made my mind go blank <laughs> like it's great when that happens because i'm like yes i know it's that good shit but then it's bad <laughs> when that happens because i'm like I'm like stuck. I'm like, what do I even say? <laughs> but yeah, I, I really like, you know, you bring in the fact that how you said it's like uh, 
you know, when you have no more room to take anything else in, like when you've eaten so much, there's no space. You have to digest and process before, you know, you can um, you can take in anything else. And and I think that's, you know, and I think it's like the expectation for knowledge, how much information you're supposed to know has increased with more information being accessible and whether or not you, uh, you know, bow down to that idea that we need to all be informed all the time about everything that's happening everywhere right now, because I think that's a big thing with social media. It used to be just like, you know, oh, so-and-so's house caught on fire last night. What? Yeah. Uh, fire department, we were passing buckets all night. Like that was, that was the extent of the news, right? Like what our brains are primed to care about and keep at the forefront. It's just not that much information. And so it is a good question of like what happens when you're just constantly taking in information. And I think it can really lead to a lot of, I think one of the things it does is really desensitize us uh, personally. I think it makes it feel less real. Some things that should never feel like that should never feel like a TV show where we're talking about like people's lives. But I think there's an element where some stuff that's, and it's a whole tangent, but I think some stuff starts feeling like entertainment that I don't think ever should be entertainment or used for that purpose. But yeah, it's it's like constant just stimulation. And I don't think that's healthy for us. I don't think we were designed that way. I think we need times where we're outside and we're sitting and we're feeling the sun or watching you know, a butterfly flap its wings and we're amazed that this is a real thing and it was created. And I think we're supposed to be like looking at the leaves and noticing them changing. And we're supposed to be in tune with things that move at a certain pace that's natural. And the more we attune ourselves to a pace that's unnatural, the less that benefits us. Mm, so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that was like giving me chills because it's so true, you know, the, the way that it's this stuff has become entertainment. Um, and I think it's like too much. It's like, I don't know, I guess there's maybe like a sweet spot where it does push for some kind of, you know, evolution. But I think too much, it's like it can definitely cause like almost like a normalized like mass psychosis because it's just kind of like we're so ungrounded with everything, even if it's like, we think it's spiritual or whatnot, it's like, if we're not giving ourselves time to integrate and process it and relate it to our real life, like who we really are, not just like some abstract ideas, again, just like getting lost in the mind. It's so delusional, I think sometimes. And so I don't know, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. And um, yeah, it's just kind of, again, simplifying and, and letting it be new, because then it's like you start having all these sort of, it's almost, um, I don't know if I'm gonna say dangerous, but like you start just, it's almost like you're, if you're not processing that fully, it's like you're kind of getting programmed again. And you don't, need, it's like, we're trying to like kind of, at least I am trying to kind of deprogram. I'm not trying to reprogram with like all of these other belief systems and ideas and like thoughts. It's just like, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you brought something and I, I wasn't even thinking about social media, but I mean, how can you not in the world that we're in right now, not include that in a conversation about anything? <laughs> because it's so, I would, the word that comes up is pervasive. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I don't, I don't mean to like posit it as 100% negative and I don't think you are either. I don't feel that way. It's just like an awareness of what is happening because you know, I think sometimes it's easy to feel like you did something just from watching someone else do it. So watching someone else do something good for them, you feel like, ah, oh, I did something good. It's like, no, I just watched someone do something and my kitchen is still dirty. <laughs> like I watched someone else clean their whole kitchen and that was really satisfying as if I did it. Or I watched someone else meditate and that felt really satisfying to watch someone do something good, but I didn't. And instead I've been on here for how long, <laughs> you know, watching people do things that make me feel good. And it's a way of almost like um, getting the reward without the, any work. And, you know, what we know about our brain is that it will seek reward. And then that what it takes to feel rewarded only increases with certain things that are addictive, like 
social media. So you need to watch more of people doing the things that make you feel good in order to feel good. And so you have to keep doing more of that to get that feeling. And now when you do it in real life, it feels less satisfying than watching someone else do it because you're now primed to not like that in between stage. You're primed to want it immediately. And that that is so opposite of how any real type of growth happens. I mean, back to a seed or that's that that common saying, which is like you don't pick the fruit the same day you plant the seed. But if you're primed to want instant reward, when you plant that seed and it doesn't grow, then you might be inclined to stop watering it. And then you will never reap the benefits of planting the seed because it's not just about planting the seed. It's about nurturing the seed and watching it grow and being okay with the fact that things take time to grow. Mm. <laughs> wow. Wow. I think it just touched on such a, one of the biggest prominent shadows, honestly, humanity is facing as a whole, especially the younger generation that is like very born into, you know, this, realm and as you're describing it again i have to bring up the matrix it's like the matrix within the matrix like you're not even doing this stuff you're literally your brain is literally getting a hit off of watching someone else do it and it's like a virtual reality type of thing and i have to say i feel it so much i've actually really been having to check myself since i started this kind of social media break from it um of just like and I'm not saying this in like beating myself up way, but just kind of being honest with like how I feel like it's fried my brain a little bit of just like that, exactly what you're describing of, and like, in like the way that I, I've been cutting, putting like instant gratification, I feel like way before like things that are actually important to me. And so I really have to kind of like slow down and, and evaluate that. But I, you know, I'm sure it's like that for everyone. And it's very tricky. It's very unconscious. It's very, um it's just it it is very unnatural and thinking about you know like this kind of tech agenda and like that I don't know not saying that I believe that that will happen or not but you know just like those dark timelines kind of of people merging with like AI and you know it's like I feel like it's kind of even like a primer for that because it's like why should I work my ass off and do something that you know is going to be hard and meaning meaningful but hard when I could just like plug in and then have all of this um, whatever luxury and dopamine and mental candy without having to work hard. And I can just keep doing that, even though I'm literally in a matrix in a matrix at that point. Yeah. How, how disconnected can people, can people be and still alive? I think is a, an agenda of a lot of, players that aren't necessarily uh in front of the curtain you know so to speak and yeah and I think it's you know we could also have a whole conversation about um the outrage you know online outrage and how sometimes people think just getting really angry is them doing the thing (laughs) like I got really worked up today so I feel like I did a good thing I told someone about themselves or I argued at someone on the internet that they were wrong and that they were stupid and that um, they just didn't understand anything and they don't care about humanity, but I care more than them because I argued at them. And it's like this really weird thing that's happened. Uh, I've seen a lot with like um, our generation and I'm sure the younger generation, I'm not, I, I'm not going to lie. I don't, I don't feel like I have a grasp on Gen Z and I don't know if I ever will. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think what I've seen with Gen Z a lot is just almost this weird, everything's a joke and nothing feels real to them in a way that's very, um, you know, like something terrible happens. And the first thing someone does is like make talk about it as if it didn't happen to them. And they're like, you know, in the car and it's upside down and they're making a TikTok. And it's like, what? You know, it's like, how are you making a TikTok right now? Like, this is serious. Like, this is actually serious. This is not a joke. This is for real, you know? But yeah, I think that this feeling of like, I did something because I posted a comment or I did something because I simply made a TikTok is another level of disconnection in which, you know, people aren't necessarily actually coming together in the real world or like how easy it is to comment on someone doing something and having a problem with the way they do it versus trying yourself. Like, I don't like the way that they ran that uh, charity project. Like they shouldn't even be doing that because X, Y, and Z. 
but then the person saying that has not done anything toward the cause. It's just so easy to criticize, you know, and I think it, it leaves people feeling like that satisfaction of like that, you know, that ego satisfaction of like, I told someone off and getting like gratification from that. And it makes people feel scared to try anything because, well, if I try and I don't get 100% right, then someone's going to eat me alive on the internet. Yeah. And, and that is, that is crazy too. Um, and just having, I think over overcoming, I guess that fear, you know, of just, that is what's so weird too, is it's like, it's almost like these kind of realities are merging or maybe we're just seeing them in like a very real way where it's like, yeah, if you have doubt or fears about what you're doing or creating, it's like, you can almost be certain that somebody if you put yourself out there very bravely, which you, you know, I encourage people to do when they have something they're doing in their heart. Um, a lot of times, you know, you will find someone who's, who will pick up on that and, and project onto you something. So I think that it can never be like overstated enough to just, you know, have so much love and compassion and security for yourself and not giving your power away like that because yeah, it, it is crazy. I mean, and it also makes me wonder um, how do we, this sounds so insane for me to even ask this question, but it's like, how do we even live without social media? Like, obviously you can live without it, but it's like, if you're trying to do something, if you're an artist, if you're a business, it's like, it just feels like it's, I don't know. It's, it's in kind of interesting. I'm curious what you think about that or, you know, how to navigate that. Yeah. I, I think that's a real question at this point because, you know, it used to be like, People would put out flyers, but now like businesses don't even necessarily have spaces to advertise things in that way because there's an assumption that everything's on social media. So old ways of like advertising things aren't necessarily in place anymore. So if you tried to go back to that, it would be someone like, you have a flyer? Like, why are you trying to give me a flyer about a concert that you're doing? Why aren't you posting it? Or like, you know, even trying to tell people where the address is. Oh, well, can you like you know, give me the link to like, you know, so it's like, um, I don't know. I don't know. You know, there. it's interesting too, because it, it's really not that old, but it does feel like hard to imagine a world without it. Um, and I think there's the assumption that it'll always be here. But again, there's no guarantee that we will always have social media. So we may be asking ourselves that question in a very much more panicked way <laughs> in a few <laughs> years. You know, it might be like, what do we do? <laughs> you know, but maybe, you know, maybe it will become a thing of like, in this weird way, I, I think we've talked about this too. Like we shifted from like very few people were celebrities to like everyone is a celebrity and influencer now with like TikTok. And that's been a, we a weird transition to watch how, for a lot of younger kids, I've heard like they get more excited about people on TikTok than some of the people we grew up like seeing who were super famous, you know, like they may not know who Selena Gomez is, but they know like who a TikToker is who we may not know. And they get really excited about seeing that person. So it, that shift happened. And then I wonder if we'll go into a phase of like no one's a celebrity. I don't know. But maybe it'll be like people just make music or people just make art and they share it. And there's not like a shame about it, but there's also not a like we're deifying you. It's like, you know, you shared music and that's beautiful and people come and they gather and they see you if they see you and they don't if they don't. Yeah, I love that. I feel like that that resonates because it's almost like, yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. Like, because if it's almost like if nobody is a celebrity, then everybody is a celebrity. And I think that's really the truth is because like, we're all the main characters of our own movie, especially if we claim that um, for ourselves, you know, and I feel like that is more kind of like natural than idolizing like certain other human beings, you know? Um, yeah. So that's interesting. I think that is interesting. Yeah, I think right now I see it's kind of in a phase that's kind of narcissistic. And, I, and I'm hopeful that we'll see it go more to the middle of like everyone's confident and centered in themselves and knows their worth. But it's not in this way of like um, my, my main character story is more important than your main character story. And more just in a way of like 
I honor and respect the divinity in you and you honor and respect the divinity in me. And I really want to see us get there. <laughs> Setting the bar high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it can feel really isolating to live in a world where it's almost like people are missing each other because it's like you walk right past someone. And I mean, I don't know if you've seen this, but people make eye contact a lot less um, in my experience and people stop to speak a lot less and I know like a lot of things are getting automated but even when they're not like if you go into a store it's pretty uncommon that if it's a younger person some older people will like if if you're getting checked out like it's pretty rare that the person has a conversation with you or if you try to have a conversation you know it's just kind of like why are you trying to talk to me um and I grew up in the south and so like and my my granddad was like a really friendly guy and he would stop and have a conversation with anyone like he just hey how are you and like really meant it like and so for me it's odd you know that it's happening in the south cuz culturally the south was it's been known for like people talking to each other and so seeing the way that Sometimes when you check out with the machine, it feels like a very similar experience to checking out with the person because like neither is an experience where you're being spoken to or seen. So I don't know. I think it's a lot of interesting things happening. And I that's what I mean. I hope we can come to a point of like seeing each other again because I think people kind of pulled, got some of their power back, but then kind of got into a phase of like, no one else matters but me. And I want us to come back to like, no, actually we all matter. And that's the thing that I feel has been missing. And I feel like I'm craving, like, can we talk to each other? Can we look at each other? Can we respect each other? Like, can we, can we have community again? <laughs> yes. Yes. I feel like my heart is like on fire after that. Like, seriously, that's such a good point. Yeah. I think that's a really good um, observation of like people bringing their power back and then now, you know, being able to like, expand that beyond just themselves you know into and what's crazy what you know that I, I feel like is a theme too for whether it's social media or like the self-checkout or all these sort of like technological things is it's it's so interesting how it's like it's so convenient and expedient mm -hmm. um but then it's but then it's cutting out like really important things and so you know I think that is um yeah something that is Hopefully, people, you know, we all can kind of start to realize more. I, I think, and I know we're getting to that point, but I love this conversation because I think what it brings up is the importance of values and people knowing what their values are and what they're willing to sacrifice and what they aren't. Because, I mean, what someone else's agenda is, isn't necessarily in alignment with ours, but so many things are advertised as if these companies have the same agenda as us, which is the more convenient, the better, right? Like I was watching and I'm not like, anti, I mean, I'm recording this on a computer with like, I use technology, I'm not like anti-technology at all, but um, I am wary, <laughs> you know, because yesterday I, I think it was, you know, Apple had their announcing their um, new products, like their new watches and their new phones. And they, they announced this feature on the watch and it was like, oh, look, now you can answer a call by like doing this instead of having to press the button in case you're like, you know, if you're doing something and you can't press the button, now you can answer the call like this. But it's like all the examples they showed, like someone was in the shower, someone was like actively working. Someone's, it's like, okay, if you can't press a button, like maybe it's just not a time to be on the call. Like maybe it's just okay if we're not always accessible. Maybe it's okay if we can't always be on. But instead, look how convenient these companies are making for us to always be accessible, always be available like a machine not like a person. So it's like these companies are like, look at this. You can now, you know, go to the store and do your own labor for free and check it out and not have to, you know, it's like wait in a longer line as everyone who is not an experienced cashier is trying to scan and figure out what the number is on their bananas that they don't know. You know, it's like how cool for us. Like this is happening. <laughs> that is crazy. I mean, that's a perfect example, like seriously, because I think that not obviously never in a fear-based way, but I think that is a real threat that hum humanity faces is the techno is the technology and like this kind of agenda to merge people and turn them into machines. Like like that's such a great example. It's like it's almost like that's just like 
how much more of like a slave to your ego can you be where you're doing all this stuff and you can't even answer your phone, but you got to take this call to just like do add something else to like some kind of um, productivity. That's like, what are you even doing at this point? You're just like full on in the matrix. I mean, that's crazy. I think that's why the matrix hit so hard. Cause it's like, I think we already have been in the matrix, but now we're literally seeing another layer of the matrix where people are literally going to be, it's like where people are in like a virtual reality, like even deeper, you know, than just like being here now. Mm. I think it's going to be really interesting what happens because I think, I think there's always a mistake. There's always a misstep where, you know, um, the intelligence of people is underestimated. And the truth is people are actually very smart. And so people are picking up on what's happening and people don't like it. It's just that not everyone is aware that everyone is, a lot of people are feeling similarly. And so as soon as there's like enough people going like, did you see that? Yeah, I did. You know, I didn't like that at all. Me neither. You know, and, and, and we start doing that, which is the importance of looking at each other and talking to each other. When we start doing that, oh boy. Because for a long time, you know, these things have been peddled to us and people were like, well, what choice do I have? But to, you know, right? Like what choice do I have? That's That's been the biggest thing I've seen with technology and, and automation. Well, it's just what's going to happen. What do you mean it's just what's going to happen? As if we're like not agents in our own lives, as if we're just like, passively supposed to ex accept whatever experience some they have decided it's just what's going to happen like no way no <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we don't consent to that that is beautiful i feel like that's a beautiful um yeah just way to to conclude that and i'm glad that that came up i feel like that's really important and and in this whole kind of theme again of of letting it be new, even letting like these things be new. I think that what you're bring, what you're saying is so 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 meaningful. Of like looking at each other and talking to each other again, and like it's almost like you know sometimes that can like kind of snap us out of like these zombified states of just like it's like on a conveyor belt, you know, just like moving along, you know, and it's like you know it's like pulling you out of the matrix, like get off the conveyor belt, and then that's a whole range of um yeah that's like a whole new range of I guess like responsibilities that people have to be willing to take on as well of um you know awakening to to the truth and and not succumbing to the inconveniences and the instant gratification and all these stuff but I kind of feel like we're all sort of being tested to kind of as we go forward um pull away from that stuff. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how how that all unfolds. Catch us on a farm somewhere 2024. <laughs> yeah, seriously. That's the goal. I think that's the goal. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, any final thoughts to those? I felt like final thoughts, but, you know. <laughs> um, as always, just so much love and gratitude to you and everyone listening. And hopefully this is helpful um yeah just like I think that's that's the thing is just letting I love again like that mantra I'm grateful for you bringing that in today of just letting it be new and for me um also like simplifying and just kind of being aware of your thoughts and of all these distractions and um because I think these you know all these distractions it just gets more and more intense so I think it is important again to to let it be new and have that sort of open beginner's mind you know, that God presence that it doesn't have to be what you think it has to be. It could actually, you know, if you let God show you, it could actually be something way more divine and huge, you know, than our limited human minds can think. So that's, that's my final word today. <laughs> and it was good. <laughs> oh, and I think my final thoughts are like, I was like, what did this random rant about technology have to do with anything? And I, and the thing I'll say last is, I think we've all been primed mentally for this idea that we're heading all heading towards this timeline of like robots will be running the world and there's nothing we can do. And I think that's an aspect of let it be new. 
you know, we don't have to live or create a reality that is against our humanity, that separates us from source, that denies us our, you know, divinity. We have a choice and we can let a timeline come in that's completely new and something that we haven't been primed for at all and just be like, whoa, and like, wow, and just allow the wonder to come back and the curiosity. And I think there's a lot of negative connotation with mystery because we want certainty, but there's a lot of beauty and wonder. And if we can look at the world again and go, wow, I think we will be back on the timeline that is for our highest good. Drop mics, drop the mic. That's perfect. Yes, thank you so much, Bianca. That is amazing. On that note, I'm Bianca. I'm Regan. And this has been a Birth of Fresh Air podcast. Thank you so much for listening.